Okay, so let's talk for a minute about the flip side of negation introduction, which we just saw. This is negation elimination. Negation elimination is the exact same thing. We're just going from assuming that something is not the case to showing that that gets us into trouble, so that thing must be the case. In other words, we're going to make an assumption that something is not true, show that a contradiction follows, and therefore that thing must be true. All right, so it basically works exactly the same as negation introduction. Let's just run through a pretty simple example and see how this works. And once again, this is a very, very useful tool. You know, if you don't know how to proceed in a proof, it's often this, this route that you need to go. And these, uh, these methods of using the negation rules in order to get a, get a proof done or a derivation done, they always work, you know, so they're often where you go to if you don't know what, what else to do. They may be a little bit longer than what's called a direct proof or a proof that doesn't use them, but they will get you where you're going, all right? So let's go ahead and take a look. So we have these assumptions, or these are the premises of our argument. If not Q, then R. Not R is equivalent to P and P, and we're trying to get Q, all right? So there's nothing here that we can work with directly. Why don't we assume not Q and see if we can get a contradiction to come out of that? So we will be able to uh, derive Q. So we open up a subderivation with the assumption of not Q. And we're trying to use the negation elimination rule. All right, so from not Q, let's start reasoning with not Q and see what happens. Well, from not Q, we get R. Disjunction, sorry, conditional elimination on lines one and four. J uh, just FYI, this rule, conditional elimination, it's often called modus ponens. If any of you out there are classicists or know Latin, it means the bridging principle. We're making a bridge from, uh, we're making a bridge here from uh, not Q to R. All right. Now. We can't do anything with R directly, okay? But remember what we're trying to do here is get a contradiction. So if we can get not R down here, we'll have what we want. As a matter of fact, if we look back up here, and one common mistake uh, that people make, or it's a way that they get stuck is they get down in the subderivations and they forget that they can still use stuff from back of their original assumptions, all right? So we have P, and we have P is logically equivalent to not R. So we can write not R pretty much at any point in this proof. And we justify that with biconditional elimination on lines 2 and 3. Okay. So now we've shown that not Q led to this contradiction between R and not R. So we can go ahead and take the negation off and conclude that Q. By negation elimination on lines 4 to 6.